Welcome back. The House, uh, the House Oversight Committee releasing more WhatsApp messages uh, sent by Hunter Biden, this time to a Chinese energy company associate. This is CEFC. Uh, in 2017, Hunter Biden writes this, $10 million per annum budget to use to further the interest of the joint venture. This move to $5 million is completely new to me and is not acceptable, obviously. I can make $5 million in salary at any law firm in America. The Bidens are the best I know at doing exactly exactly what the chairman wants from this partnership, he writes. This is the New York Times waited until the 21st paragraph of a piece today to even acknowledge the mishandling of the Hunter Biden investigation. The New York Post editorial board writing this, freeze Hunter's plea deal until we know which prosecutors lied to save him. Joining me right now is Tennessee Congressman David Kustoff. He's a member of the House Ways and Means Committee and the only former U.S. attorney left in the House of Representatives. Congressman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Your committee found all of this and uh, released these WhatsApp messages. Can you tell us what the committee found? Yeah, well, first of all, Maria, thank you for having me on this morning. I, I do wonder that that plea agreement was announced, I think, Tuesday of last week. We had our hearing in the Ways and Means Committee to decide whether to release these transcripts from the two whistleblowers two days after the, the plea agreement. And I think that if the nation knew about uh, these transcripts, the, the testimony from the two IRS whistleblowers before the plea agreement, uh, the plea agreement never would have been agreed to. Uh, that's the first thing. But the statements that the whistleblowers made, remember these whistleblowers, their livelihood is working for the Internal Revenue Service. So they came forward um, at great peril and great liability to their, to their jobs and their abilities to provide for their families. They came forward because they saw the misapplication of justice and, and frankly, a two-tiered system as it relates to the Bidens versus anybody else. The, the allegations, uh, the what, WhatsApp messages that, that you just showed, the other WhatsApp message, everything that the whistleblowers talked about, if, um, if that had been anybody other than Hunter Biden, or Joe Biden, stick anybody's name on there, um, they would have been prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, this is just stunning, uh, Congressman. It really is. And I don't understand how the DOJ can uh, explain away uh, investigating a tax evasion on income without actually investigating the income. Of where this money came from. I mean, he's asking for 10 million here, 5 million there for all of these foreign nationals. What was, what were they paying for? Did Joe Biden make policy decisions in China's favor to be paid? Well, uh, first of all, consider consider a hunter and whatever talents and abilities to uh, affect his father or affect government. They were essentially paying for uh, for influence pay. I mean, that's the bottom line because Hunter Ta Hunter Biden has no other talents, no other abilities, other than to touch his father and other people within the within the government. And when you when you go through the the testimony of the two whistleblowers, and one of them talked about that there's at least 2.2 million dollars. In unpaid taxes that they were looking at, right. I can tell you, uh, in, any U.S. attorney's office in the country would have uh, brought serious tax charges as it as it relates to that. So it's uh, it's deeply concerning to me as a former federal prosecutor. I think it should be obviously very concerning to any American. So when I have my constituents or people that come on your program, everyday Americans, that say, you know. If, if it were me and the same allegations were made, yeah. um, I would be handled differently. That's a, that's a real, real concern. It's a real concern. And Todd Pyro, I think you've got two issues going on here. On the one hand, you've got the influence peddling, the fact that the Biden family is demanding people in power in China tied to the Chinese Communist Party. They're demanding millions of dollars just so that, you know, to, to pocket the money themselves. And then the other part of this is the fact that the DOJ slow walked it. OK, Jason Smith, the chairman of House Ways and Means, was with me the other day. He said to me that the Biden family took in $17 million dollars 
dollars from 2014 to 2019, but the FBI and DOJ sat on it and they allowed the statute of limitations to, to become effective. Yeah, obviously, all roads lead to Joe Biden, but before they get there, Congressman, they really do have to go through Merrick Garland first. So that leads me to what I think has to be the culmination of all of this. Congressional hearing where you have Merrick Garland versus the special counsel, David Weiss. One of them is telling the truth. One of them is not. Is that what you envision, Congressman? Well, Todd, I'll take it even a step further because go to Whistleblower One's transcript where he and, and these these two whistleblowers took very, uh, very thorough notes in all their meetings. Whistleblower number one in his notes wrote down that, that David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, said, I'm not the deciding official on whether charges are filed. Now, I'll, I'll remind the audience that the two whistleblowers who came forward, when they gave their statements, they had they had to testify truthfully, or they could be prosecuted for not testifying truthfully. You've got the Attorney General of the United States that said the U.S. attorney did have ultimate authority. So, one of those two people are not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I believe right now that Merrick Garland is set to testify before the House Judiciary Committee in September, maybe September 20th. Uh, the U.S. Attorney David Weiss should come forward, hopefully before then, and testify uh, about the whistleblower's comments and whether, in fact, he actually said that. Because if he did, if he did make that claim, then Merrick Garland's not telling the truth. Well, what about the testimony of Hunter Biden? I mean, the computer salesman is suing him, and he's got to testify as well, right? He's got to go into that, a deposition. That, that, that's right. And, and, and you know, if, if you pull way back, uh, and, and I think this is important, this plea agreement uh, goes forward before, before a district court judge later in, in July, maybe July 26th. If you're the judge and, and you've got, you've got a, a, the government and the, and the uh, defendant, Hunter Biden, coming into court wanting to, wanting to plead guilty to these charges and, and likely, likely no prison time, if you're the judge, and I mean, the judge, the, the judge has internet. The judge watches TV. The judge gets the newspapers. The judge should know about these transcripts. Uh, this district court judge could, could say, you know, based on what I know, what's out there in the public, I don't accept the plea. Mm hmm. Okay. So then, then the judge could just not accept the plea. Then what happens? Uh, then they'll have to. Then they'll have to go to, to trial and hopefully. The government would go forward on the other allegations that that both whistleblowers wanted to investigate, but were rebuffed yeah. by uh, their testimony, the assistant U.S. attorney and other IRS officials. Again, these are the reasons that, that the two whistleblowers came forward in the very first place. Sister, this is just stunning. This is a stunning story, Congressman. Real quick before you go, Kevin McCarthy the other day said that if this is true, we will start uh, a looking at an impeachment trial, uh, an impeachment activities for Merrick Garland. What is the plan in Congress? What, what is your role here? Are you going to be uh, drawing up articles of impeachment for Merrick Garland, for uh, Joe Biden, for any of the other perpetrators here? Yeah, I think uh, I think you've got to take it step by step. And the, the first thing is, you know, we've, we've heard from the whistleblowers. They've made their they've made their statements. We need to hear from the U.S. Attorney David Weiss. We need to hear from the Attorney General Merrick Garland because again, either the whistleblower is telling the truth, or Merrick Garland is telling the truth. Well, right. One or the other. I, the, the whistleblower came forward and gave these statements, and he knows that uh, that he could be prosecuted for not telling the truth. Congressman, thanks very much. We'll keep keeping the spotlight on that one. David Kustoff joining us this morning. Thank you, sir.